Too often, the simple things are what lead to success. But the irony is that the lesson most crucial for success are often the most difficult to learn. Simple as they are, these may not be the fault of the lessons, but because we are humans. As humans, we are prone to follow the path of least resistance. It comes natural to us. So it becomes unnatural and against our nature to attempt to do what is difficult, even if it makes for success. Most people aren't successful not because they didn't have the opportunity, but because they do not do the things they are supposed to do. Those things are often difficult. Before you jump to people who labor physically hard on their jobs, you may be surprised to know that most of those folks are lazy mentally. Man will easily pay the price to do labor that quickly brings success, but there are very few men who will be willing to labor in the brain to bring success into reality. That's because mental work is real work, simple yet difficult, difficult yet guaranteed for success. There are several countless other difficult life lessons you must learn if you must succeed. But below, at least just three basic ones you can start to use for yourself. Simple yet challenging, difficult yet possible to practice. Number one, see fear as a friend. Every year, starting more than five years ago, I do something on my birthday that I'm most afraid of. I pick what I am very much scared to do and do it anyway. Also, I play the scare game. This is the game I made up where I do one thing daily that I'm most afraid of. I have to admit it's been a while I played the game, but when I did, it had a significant impact on my life. This may be the hardest lesson to learn. If I told you to meet the richest person on earth, would you do it? If I asked you to write the biggest check to yourself and expect to have that cash right in your bank accounts in 10 years, would you believe it? Our greatest hindrances to success have always been fear. A lot of people may not admit it, but even the seemingly bold person exhibits fear. He can try a whole bunch of things, but he won't attempt the serious stuff that would make for even bigger successes. In your quest to have all the money that you need, make fear your friend. The presence of fear may be the proof that what you are attempting to try out in your business is what to try. Once, I heard the story of a king who wanted someone to marry his daughter. The only catch was that the shooter must be willing to swim in a river swarming with crocodiles. None of the men around could swim the river. But the man who had been very poor for a long time dived in without thinking. He swam through and married the princess. Leaping and swimming through the ocean filled with sharks may seem difficult. But when you are consumed by the desire to have words at the end of the ocean, you jump on and swim through. On March 11, 1984, in the Westman's island of Iceland, the 74-foot trawler Helice overturned in a storm. Good logger Fritterson made history. After falling into the 41 degrees water, he should have soon died of hypothermia when the body temperature goes below 93.2 degrees blood flow to the brain is reduced. His two companions from the boat sank in 20 minutes, but God Logger swam for six hours, breaststroke, breaststroke, backstroke. As he was close to the shore, a voice said to him, lie down and rest, you deserve it. But a stern voice of reason argued, if you go to sleep now, my lord, you will never wake up. Somehow, God Logger defied all laws of physiology and survived. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. See fear as a nudge to give it a try. If it fails, at least you gave it a shot. Number two, when it comes to business, be far more curious than your competitors. Some years ago, when I discovered I would lead a particular group that was filled with smart and highly intelligent people, I was scared. At the time, I struggled with speaking good English and expressing myself confidently. What did I do? As soon as I was given the office, I bought all kinds of great books and novels especially. I read so much I thought my brains would blow out. I studied night and day, read everywhere, read while I was working on the road until I became proficient in English and gained some high level of confidence to lead that group. 
it's difficult to learn much more than your competitors because it means you have to spend most of your time doing what others won't do. You have to spend your time reading business, personal finance, or self-development books while others are watching TV. You have to stay up planning and sometimes studying your market while others are snoring. You have to spend a large amount of money to travel for a significant business seminar while others think it is unwise to spend so much money training your mind. But the good news is, when you know what others don't know, you have what they don't have. I have lost jobs and opportunities in the past simply because I wasn't as prepared as I should be. I made up my mind that I wouldn't be caught off guard like that anymore. This may not be a fun thing to do, to be actively more curious than your competitors. But when Harry Ford wanted to compete and win in the highly competitive automobile market, he learned what his competitors didn't know and soon beat them to it. Knowledge is still power and the amount of information available to you that you use is still key to your liberation. Number 3. Never spend the money you don't have. When I was planning for my wedding, I had very few clients. My business wasn't doing so well at that time. I had made so much money years and months before. Suddenly, now things just went awry. My father were out of jobs. My parents were out of jobs too. Coincidentally, so were my wife-to-be's parents. We had to have the wedding or postpone it. What we had planned was little. But it still required that we spend money, the money I didn't have. People suggested a lot of ideas. My spouse suggested some expensive stuff to do. I looked around and figured, see, I can't spend money I don't have. And even if I had the money, I will never spend so much money to feed people who will never remember my face in a few months. With that understanding, I had a beautiful small wedding and saved so much money in the process. In the country where I come from, it's almost a taboo to have a small wedding. You could be ashamed or embarrassed just by doing so. First, even low-income families often go out of their way to spend big on weddings, only to start the so-called marriage broke and in death. This is not limited to money. It also includes buying expensive cars owning expensive houses, wearing costly suits so that you can look expensive and rich. Billionaire Warren Buffett, who is reputed for using a flip Samsung phone, said, I will get myself an iPhone when the last person on earth has gotten it. In other words, he's not planning to get an iPhone, not because he can't, but because the rich spend money on what's important and relevant to their lives. Am I saying you should look tattered and use only cheap or low quality stuff? No, that's not the point. But whatever does not move your finances forward, whatever takes from your finances and doesn't in any way add to you, whatever is a liability to your money and not an asset, crush it, scratch it off your list. This includes getting away from friends who party and consistently leave off the booze. If your friends aren't people who help you multiply your money, but look for ways to take your money, get them off your back. I know, in a social media frenzied world where showing off what you've got is the numb, it is almost difficult to learn this lesson. But here's the thing, don't spend money you don't have to please people who don't like or care about you. At the end, whose boss loses the cash? If this video inspired you, like this video. We love you.